Well, hey, good morning, South Fellowship Church. This is Ryan Paulson coming to you with our study video on Luke chapter 10, verses 25 through 37. And this is the famous story of the good Samaritan. My guess is you've heard it before at some point. Um, just as a reminder, good Samaritan would have been an oxymoron to any Jewish person in the first century. So the story Jesus tells is um, controversial. It's probably a little bit convicting and confusing for the people who um, first heard it. But I think um, this story can be traced through the questions that are asked in it. I think that's the way we sort of know what's really going on in this text. And in a, in a lot of ways, um, what's going on in this text is uh, the asking of wrong questions. And I want to just show this to you. I, I think it's a fascinating way to look at this text. And as you study the scriptures, those questions that are asked are a great way to track with an argument that's being made. Um, for example, as you read through the book of Romans, especially in chapters um, 9 and 10 and 11, look at the questions that Paul is addressing and it'll help you see what's going on. That's a side note. But um, let me just, let's read this for a moment and talk. It says, on one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. So that's his motivation. And here's what he says. Teacher, he asked a rabbi, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Um, it, it's as though this, this teacher has these hints and shadows that this eternal life we'll talk about in a moment is something that you have to inherit. It's almost something you have to be born again into. See John chapter 3. <laughs> what must I do to inherit? What do you do to inherit anything? You, you, you can't do anything to inherit. You have to be born or adopted into a family, and then you have to have a, a wealthy relative who passes away, and inheritance is something that's sort of passed down to people in the family. You can't do anything to inherit the other thing that's interesting is this eternal life piece here. It's eternal in both duration, so how long it lasts, and quality. So for a Jewish person, they're not going to think of eternal life necessarily as going to heaven. That's not, that's not what's in their mind. What they're thinking of is it's the kind of life that lasts forever and the kind of life that you want <laughs> to last forever. That's what they're thinking of. So when Jesus answers this question, he says, well, yeah, if you do what he talks about, if you do this, you're going to live. He doesn't say you're going to have eternal life. He says you're going to live. Okay. So the man reply, or Jesus replies, what's written in the law? What, is, what does Torah teach about this idea of eternal life? How do you read it? And the man answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind. That's Deuteronomy 6, 4. This is a Shema. Love your neighbor, he says, and love your neighbor as yourself. He quotes Leviticus chapter 19. And Jesus says, well, well just a quick time now. The church I would have grown up in, I grew up in, would have said, this guy failed the test. <laughs> like, that is not how you inherit eternal life. You, you pray a prayer. And Jesus says, no, no, um, you're right. You've answered correctly. That is how you enter life. By loving God and by loving people, do this and you will live, which is interesting. Romans chapter 9 says that we accept, we believe, and we confess that Jesus is Lord, and he's risen from the dead, and it sounds a little bit different than love God and love your neighbor. It's just coming at the same thing from a different direction. So that's we could do more on that later. But this man wanted to justify himself he, he wanted to make sure that he was okay, that he was loving God and he was loving neighbor. And so he asked this question. He asked, who is my neighbor? 
And that this is what he's asking. If I can draw my circle small enough, that if it's if neighbor is just me, my family, other Israelites, well then then I'm okay. But if it's a little bit outside of me, it starts to get more difficult. And if it's a little bit outside of that, it starts to get more difficult. And I mean, if it's if it's the whole world, well then it becomes almost impossible. So Jesus, let's talk practically. Who is my neighbor? And what Jesus does is he tells a story about a good Samaritan. You've heard it before, and if not, you can read it again. But you have the priest who walks right by the man on the side of the road. You have the Levite who walks right by the man on the side of the road. And then you have the Samaritan who steps up and loves the person around him. And Jesus answers the question that he goes back to this original question, right? Who is my neighbor? Who is my neighbor? That's the question the Good Samaritan story answers, sort of. Which of these three, verse 36, which of these three do you think was a neighbor? So does Jesus answer the question? No. (laughs) He doesn't answer the question, how big does the circle have to be? He wants to know if the man, if, if this teacher of the law, are you becoming neighborly? So it's not about defining the neighbor. It's about becoming neighborly. That's what Jesus is after. So who's my neighbor? That's the wrong question. That's the wrong question. The right question is, am I becoming more neighborly? Am I becoming the kind of person whose heart goes out to people, whoever I see, whether they are literally my neighbor or whether it's somebody that I just happen to meet? Do I have time for them, space for them, energy for them, emotion for them? Am I becoming neighborly? The expert of the law replied, well, who's, who's the one who was the neighbor? Well, it's the one, he can't even say the name of the Samaritan who had mercy. That's what Jesus is inviting people to. And he says, go and do likewise. That's the invitation, um, not just to define the neighbor, but to become neighborly. Follow the questions. As you read the scriptures, follow the questions. It will help you understand what the story's all about. I hope that's helpful. God bless you as you study the scriptures.